What's poppin', it's Mello, back at you with another video in a swishy. And today, what we gonna get to is chords. I'm gonna be teaching you basic lessons about chords and stuff like that, like inversions and all of that stuff. I'm gonna give you some sauce when it comes to chords and it's important because it'll teach you different things about chords that you may not have known to where you can get different sounds from the chords that you're playing and stuff like that. It's good sauce. It's gonna help you with your beats. It's gonna help you with your compositions. Now, the one thing I wanna make clear is that you don't need to memorize all of these terms as far as the concepts. You just need to memorize how they work and how you can use them. But I'm gonna be identifying it so that you don't have to go search over here and over there just to figure out music theory or anything like that you'll have it all in the video but again when we're making the music the most important thing is to know how to use what you're learning not really retaining the names of the things that, because when it comes down to it you're not going to say oh i'm going to use the first interval in the song no you just move the note up so with that being said i'm going to give you the sauce let you know what it is before we get into it, I want you to put a like on the video, helps your boy out, let's get into it. So the first concept we're gonna talk about is triads. And a triad is basically just a chord, but it's a three note chord. We're gonna break down the basic triad just so you know, we got the major pattern right here, we got the minor pattern right here, we're gonna be working in both of those, C major for the most part, and C minor for the most part. With that being said, let's go over triad. So, so any chord with just three notes would be considered a triad. So let's go over a basic C major chord and break down that triad and basically how it works. Now, one thing I wanna be clear about, you don't have to remember these phrases. You just need to know how these things work and how they help you when you're making beats and stuff like that. So you have that right there. We're gonna make a C major chord. So we start there. That is the first or the root two, three. This is the second note. So you skip one note in the scale and then go to the next. That'll be the second note. It's called a third because you see we went three notes up. So one, two, three from the root. So then we skip another note. Boom, we got that there. That is a fifth for the same reason this is a third. One, two, three, four, five. In any chord, that you see, usually they're gonna have a root, a third, and a fifth. Let's listen to that. So that's a basic major chord as far as a C, but that's a basic triad. Let's go to minor. Let's do a C minor chord. Same thing, we won't go over it real deep. You see how they both have different sounds. You can make a basic triad off of any note in the scale. So let's make a random triad off A. We're gonna click A. Remember the formula is you skip one note in the scale, boom. And then after that, you skip another note in the scale. So you have another chord there. That is another triad. So from this, all you need to retain is that a triad is a three note chord. Now, regardless what scale you're in, you need to know the difference between a major and minor chord. Now we're gonna go off the grid for this just to show you what a major and minor chord is. So this is a C major chord. Now, regardless what scale you're in, if it fits, it fits, but why is it a C major chord? So when we start from the root, let's count up the semitones. One, two, three, four. If the third or the middle note in the chord is four semitones up, it's a major chord. Let's just move it down one. Now that is a minor chord because if you count after the root, one, two, three, the third or the middle note in the chord is three semitones away from C, so, or the root. Notice something, the last note didn't move. If you wanna identify what type of chord it is, the only thing you have to notice is where that middle note lands. That's how you identify a major and minor chord for the most part. Now we're gonna address sevenths, ninths, and thirteenths. So you know how we did the third and the fifth? It's basically the same concept where you skip another note and boom, you have a seventh. You skip another note, boom, you have a ninth. So, so let's do it again. 
just to walk you through it as far as a basic triad and whatever scale you're in or wherever you're at. So we're going to start from C. And again, this applies to any note. You know how to build a chord. You basically a basic triad. You skip each note wherever you're at. So we're going to do a C major chord because, again, we're in a major scale right here. So so we have root third fifth. Again, you skip a note. That would be a seventh chord. Let's listen to that. That's a little bit more pleasant. It has more layers, more texture. And with that, that's really good. Using seventh chords is really good for R&B. You could just use seventh chords to make a good progression and make it sound more pleasing, more melodic, more sensual sometimes, you know. But let's go over the other one. So we did a seventh. Let's do a ninth. Let's see how that sounds. And again, the formula to that is you just skip another note. See, we get more elegant as we go up. Let's do another one. Now you start to get some dissonance when you go that far. Let's go over to minor. Do the same thing. So we got root, third, fifth again. We're going to skip one. That's going to be the seventh. You see that, man? That's, that's jazzy, man. That's jazzy. Now we have a ninth because, again, we skipped another note. We still jazzy, baby. Skip another note. Now, see, that one sounds it, it, that one sounds like you got your wine glass and you got like one of those cigars hanging off of a stick out your mouth with the top hat you in a club like, you know, the jazz club. That's what that sounds like. So a little bit less dissonance than the last one, but it sounds really good. So when you're using chords, this is going to help you, you know, create certain types of vibes within the songs that you have. You know, if you weren't aware of those and you were just sticking to like three note chords and stuff, this alone will help you out. So now let's talk about inversions. Chord inversion is the relationship between the bass note and the chord, you know, basically where it lands in the triad. So if we look at the basic triad or a basic chord, boom, you have that right there. You have the C5 at the root because this is a C major chord. You see how it's built this regular, you know, you skip up every note. But let's take that and boost it up an octave. So we're going to hold control for the free loop users. We're going to hold control and push the up arrow to transpose it up an octave. That is a first inversion because the bass note is at the top. You know, you see it skips two notes. That's not a regular chord right there. So that's a first inversion because all the notes still make a C major chord, no matter how you arrange the notes. It's just a different inversion. Now, let's take this E, which is the third, and boost that up an octave the same exact way. That is a second inversion because as far as the bass note, it's in the middle. So that's basically inversions. And I'm going to give you an example of why inversions are important. So I just made a quick, you know, sequence of chords. Let's listen to it. And these are regular. If you notice, each one skips every other note. And this is in the C major scale still. So it's jumping all around. What you want to try and do sometimes, not all the times, it depends on how you feel about it. You want to make sure the notes stay within the same register. You see how this chord right here has a C and I just took it down. It has a matching note. So if you could at least, at least just invert that, you know, to take it down right there, you have a second inversion because the bass note of that chord is in the middle, but you see these notes are touching. The C's are touching. So flows a lot smoother. It's not jumping around. It stays in the same sound register. We got a G up here so we could take this G invert that up so now we have a first inversion this one we could take the a and put it back up there you see how little movement it has now 
it stays in the same register. It's like it's in a pocket. So instead of jumping all around the keyboard, it's just easy and it sounds easier. It's cool to the ear, everything like that. Now, as far as the bass notes, when you're doing this, you could still have the bass notes be what they're supposed to be. So, and that'll still hold the bass line if you have some type of bass structure when you're doing it. But as far as the chords themselves, they'll hold that feel and they'll be tighter. And if you're using a instrument that takes up a lot of frequency or something like that, you could just keep it in one pocket of the frequencies just by doing that and make it more smooth, make it flow more smooth, stuff like that. So that's a reason that inversions are good. Now you don't have to remember first inversion or second inversion or anything like that. You could just remember these notes can be taken and shifted to match some of the other notes in the progression so that they stay in the same range in the same octave. So let's continue. Now let's talk about voicing. Voicing when it comes to chords is basically how the notes of the chord are arranged. You typically have two types of arrangements when it comes to voicing. You have open or closed voicings, open or closed. Now, as far as inversions, that's a type of voicing, but let's go over this really quickly as far as just voicing in general. So we built a basic triad and we're in C minor still, but this is a G triad. So this right here would be a closed voicing. The reason it's a closed voicing is because if you look at this, we got G right here, we got G up here. All of these are within a one octave range as far as all of these notes. So if we take this A note and transpose it up an octave, wait a minute, we have G right here. We have G right here. This is outside of an octave. This makes the chord very wide. That is an open chord at that point because it spans over one octave, you know, as far as a triad. Even if we were to take this bass note and put it down here, that's an open voicing. So let's take it a step further. Let's do some funny stuff like we'll take this right here, move that down. This is still a very open chord. If you're using pads and things of that nature, or you're just trying to fill up a lot of space, you know, you could definitely use open chords and do a lot with less. You could double up the bass sometimes. Let's do another G. And let's also take the fifth, which is D. Boom. So that is a very open voicing because of how much it spans over. But you see what we did. We took the fifth which was a D, put it down here under the chord, but then we doubled the bass notes. But still, let's take a look at the chord very quickly. Even though we voiced it out different, at the core, what it is, is still a G minor seventh chord. Still a G minor seventh chord, no matter how we arrange the notes, because of what the notes are in it. So we look at it, we start a G, we skip up a note, we're at A, but to identify a minor chord, one, two, three, semitones from the root. So boom, it's a minor chord. So we got that, that's the fifth, but then we have a seven. It's a G minor seventh chord. Even though we doubled all this stuff up down there, that's exactly what it is. So let's zoom out again, play it one more time. So very quickly, I'm gonna show you in a live example how this can help you out. So we're just gonna do some root notes, so. All right, so we got basic root notes. Let's listen to it. All right, so I'm gonna build triads on top of all of these, boom. All we do is skip a note. All we do is skip a note. All we do is skip a note. In the scale, we skip a note. We got a nice sound just off of building triads. Now, let's take it a step further. Let's, we got a seventh right here. 
So what we're going to do with this next one is not put the seventh and the ninth in there. So let me show you how we do that. You see, I've moved it down an octave just so I can show you. You skip one note, that would be a seventh. You skip one note, that would be a ninth. You skip another note. Let's listen to that. You see how that sounds? Real nice. Now, let's take this. We'll leave that the same. And we'll just add another bass note at the top. This is a D sharp, so we'll add another D sharp. This is kind of out of there. Let's move these notes up. Oh, wow. Look at this. All three of these notes connect. So that means it's going to flow real smooth over these three chords. Wow. Now, before we get too deep, I want to keep the bass notes of this progression the same. So I undid what I did. Copy, paste. We're going to move that down an octave. Actually, let's move it down two octaves. Scoot it over. I'm going to erase all the notes and just leave the basses. So let's take these two back up and continue what we're doing. Let's listen to it. That connects. Does this connect to anything down here? Kind of. We could do that. We got a basic progression right there. And we just did that off of just laying down root notes and we voiced it a certain way. We use intervals and all that stuff. Now we could spread this out if we wanted to, if that's what we wanted to do, we'll keep this note and that note there. How about we take this and open it up? Let's move that down. So as far as what I bestowed upon you is basic chord knowledge, but it's it goes a little bit past the basic triads and stuff like that. So good information to know because it'll help you make better chord progressions. So I laid out some chord concepts which should help you when it comes to making your songs as far as multi-chord songs and things like that in different genres like R&B or grimy stuff whenever you're trying to make something really silky smooth and all that or if you're trying to make something really gritty or even if you're trying to make something happy whatever vibe you're going for these tips will help you now we're gonna have a video next week and that video is gonna be about chord progressions and things related to that so we're gonna take it up a notch and I'm gonna give you more game on that. And that's gonna bring it full circle and you'll have a really solid foundation when it comes to chord progressions. I thank you if you made it to the end of the video. Please subscribe to the channel, helps your boy out. Also, very quickly, drop the new sample pack, the Yasuke sample pack. Check it out, the link will be in the description. But other than that, I'll see y'all another day, somehow, some way. I'm out.